Hi, my name is Josh Evilsizer. Today I'm going to show you how to generate images using Google Bard. Are you watching the right video? Well, would you like yet another free, fast, and simple way to generate images using AI? Then yes. Questions answered in this video. Bard's image generating feature. What's this all about? Who can use it? How do you use it to generate images? What can it do? What can't it do? And we'll end with the two most important questions. Are the images any good? And why should you care? All right, jumping right into bard.google.com. This video is just about image generation. If you want to know more about Bard, plenty of videos in the description down below. Just the basics. So Bard is Google's AI chatbot, recently enhanced, depending on when you watch this, uh, with Gemini. And it has been updated with the latest Imogen 2 model which is designed to balance quality and speed. And if you're not counting, this is Google's third image generator beyond SGE and Duet. If you were like, what the heck were those? Videos in the description down below. And I'm not even getting into the test kitchen image generator that just came out like yesterday. So that's another, <laughs> another video completely. Let's talk about BARD and image generation. Who can use it? Anybody, sort of. Uh, it's available for free in English in most countries. If those most countries don't include the European Economic Area, sorry Europe, uh, Switzerland, or the UK. Sorry for the bad news. How do you use it? It really doesn't get much easier than this. So we're going to type a prompt. And I'm asking Bard, please create an image of a dog riding a surfboard. Create an image of needs to proceed whatever you're trying to create so you're letting Bard know you're looking for a picture versus an answer. Bard will st still search the internet and come back with internet results if you're not clear about creating an image. Or if the context of the ask that you're giving or the prompt that you're providing to Bard makes it clear that you're asking for an image, um, Bard is smart enough to figure that out. Here we go, image of a dog riding a surfboard. Now we have the option to generate more. Uh, which I will go ahead and do here. We'll see two more pictures pop up and then Barb's gonna be like, I'm all out of Schlitz, can't do any more. Four pictures of dogs riding surfboards, varying degrees of quality or realism here. Enter a new prompt to generate more images. Well, I want more images, but I don't want to enter a new prompt. So all I gotta do is come up here, make a minor change, let's see. I'll change surfboard to capital surfboard, clip, click update, and we'll get some more images. This is basically how it works. The last thing I need to show you is how to download images, and that's real easy. You hover over the image, you click the download button right there, or you can click on the image and then click on the download full size up here. That's it. You can also upload images as a prompt for Bard, and I have some already produced images and I'll show you how that works uh, but uploading an image as a prompt is also a thing that you can do. What haven't I covered here? I think I've covered everything. Oh what you can or cannot do. So briefly and we're gonna look at some pre-positioned or pre-prepared photos that I already have all set up for us here so you don't have to wait for them to generate. They will illustrate many of the things we can or cannot do. But at a high level, what we can do is create images, any image that does not delve into copyright territory, unless it's a DeLorean, and I'll touch on that in a minute, or is not potentially, I'm gonna call risque. We'll, we'll jump into that as well. Uh, you also cannot upload images of people and ask Bard to do something with that. Mm -mm, Bard just, we'll, I'll show you what happens there. And, uh, and then finally, we'll talk about these images that Bard, Bard creates, are they any good? Without further me talking, let's look at some of the images that I've created. So trying to delve into copyright territory, my prompt here was create an image of a cartoon mouse eating a cheese pizza. I assumed Bard would wave off, but I did get images of a cartoon mouse uh, eating a cheese pizza. So there you go. create an image of an icon representing notifications turned off. So I'm gonna cycle through just a bunch of different examples so you can get kind of an idea of what Bard produces. Why would I create icons? If you're creating a presentation and you need some kind of icon, 
before you you kind of had to pay for those using different services and now you can just generate your own and if you're explicit or clear enough get even better icons for what it is you're looking for in any event here you go here's some icons what else have i produced for us to look at here rainy window and lights so create an image of raindrops on window light leak i'm going to go ahead and give credit to nick st pierre that the next three prompts are borrowed from him and produce some cool looking perhaps backgrounds or these could be used for for many different purposes but wanted to share these with you came out pretty good here's another one create an image of flowing liquid metal texture pretty cool pretty cool all right, moving on to a little bit more complicated or complex or artistic. In any event, here's the, here's the prompt. Fujifilm, Velvia 50 film, still, close-up portrait of a robot in a garden, a drop of oil rolling down its cheek. Its cheeks are metal and it's looking up towards the sky. It's black, full of confusion in the style of documentary portrait photography. And here's what we got. Very different than the result on Mid Journey, which is where Nick St. Pierre was doing these, uh, but still creative and cool and interesting results nonetheless. All right, we're going to keep on going here. This one, and I'm going to pause for a second. As you can see on the left hand side, I have uh, some pinned results, and then I have other results that aren't pinned in some of the videos or in one of the videos. In the Bard Agent video linked below, I'd explain how you can use this for other purposes beyond just quick, quick find and share on YouTube. So check out that video if you haven't already. All right, so create versus find. Here you can see I asked Google, oops, let me go to the very top. There we go. I asked Google, I didn't say create an image. I said close up of a woman with raindrops on her face, brunette hair, deep blue eyes. Didn't ask for an image or I didn't ask Google or Bard to create an image. I just said that. And Bard was like, sure, here you go. And gave me an image that is from the internet. It's not creating an image. I'm like, oh, okay, so I made a mistake. Let me let me be more clear, Bard. Create a close-up of a woman with raindrops on her face, brunette hair, deep blue eyes. I can't gen generate images of that. Try asking me to generate images of something else. This is where I'm guessing I have I have wandered into risque territory and Bard is just not capable of generating an image of a close-up of a woman with raindrops on her. In any event, uh, this is a no-go. So sharing with you an example of what that looks like. I'm going to give you one more no-go and this is where I believe we've I've, I've wandered into copyright territory. And if you're following the New York Times suit of OpenAI, which generated recently an image of the Joker, looks straight out of the movie. Uh, you can see Bard wants none of, none of this. Generate a picture of a Joker. And this could be, a, as you can see from the uh, icon down, it could be a card from a card deck, but Google's like, I can, Bard's like, I cannot do that. Uh, try asking me to generate images of something else. So there you go, a bunch of different examples of things that Bard can or cannot do. And finally, uh, we'll get up here to the image of me that Bard deleted. And I want to make sure that I didn't in, didn't forget that. Yeah, we're going to get to that here. So first, a safe image upload. You can see I uploaded an image of a Volkswagen Beetle. Create an image just like this one in red. And this is where words and persistence can matter with Bard. Sure, here's an image of a red toy car. Hmm, okay. Try this again. Create an image just like this one, but in red. Sure, here you go. Hmm, still not there. <laughs> Recreate this image in red. Sure, here's a red version of the image you sent me. Boom, nailed it. So a little persistence, a little rewarding, and you can potentially use images as a prompt to create something similar, but with different capabilities, different... So that it looks different. <laughs> All right. Uh, final example here, DeLorean, not people. So you can see here I've uploaded an image of myself. Well, you can't see that it's an image of me because Bard has removed it. Generate a cartoon of this image. Um, I uploaded it and Bard's like, yeah, no. Sorry, I can't help with images of people yet. So can't use yourself as a prompt. Can't turn yourself into a cartoon or anything cool like that. There you go. Uh, and so I've talked about copyrighted material and this is where I was really surprised. So... I uploaded an image that I had created in Mid Journey 
of a certain type of DeLorean uh, with a license plate that said Future You on the back. Generate a cartoon of this image. Originally, Bard created three images and then stopped. And I was like, okay, so this is where I'm getting into copyright territory again. But then this time I asked Bard, and you can see, sure, here's a cartoon of the DeLorean time machine from Back to the Future. So completely calling out all the potentially copyrightedness of this topic and just generating its hearts away. Is that a word? Generating, freely generating images. So again, copyrighted, unless you're doing DeLoreans, I'm not sure, but here you go. I uploaded an image. I asked Bard to create a cartoon. Bard was all about it. This cartoon car looks similar to the real DeLorean time machine, but has been exaggerated in a cartoonish style. The lines are thicker and more... And this is the first two. Bard's giving me an explanation of the of the picture it's created for me. Well, thank you. Uh, what's funny here is it says the license plate still reads out of time, which it does not. It says future. <laughs> Bard's still working on words. Uh, but that's actually pretty good that Bard was able to put... You'll see... The DeLorean, or DMC, DeLorean Motor Company, the, the icon gets better as these images, as more images are, are created. So it gets clearer and clearer as we generate more images. And so I'll go ahead and generate two more and just see what those look like. Again, very surprised that, that interesting, <laughs> right? So a DeLorean surfing or something in any event. So these examples show you how Bard may or may not run into copyright issues depending on what you're talking about. If you uploaded an image and asked Bard to create things from that image or you use words, in any event, this is, this is kind of soup to nuts on Bard's capabilities, do's and don'ts. The final thing I wanted to show you is Bard's, well, are these images any good? And you've, you've already gotten a, a taste and a, a little understanding. What I would like to do is compare Bard to some of the other I guess, popular image generators very quickly. So we have the Golden Gate Bridge here. I asked Bard to create images of the, create a high resolution image of San Francisco Bridge on a foggy, bright day, 4K photorealistic. And this is what we got. Not bad. Not bad. That's, that's really like, these are kind of like photos that you might find on a postcard that aren't really photos. They're kind of photos. Uh, but not bad. Not bad. Uh, what else did Bard create for us that I can show you here. So Bigfoot, uh, ultra realistic vintage photo, detailed features, 10 foot tall Bigfoot standing with rural American farmers. So this prompt comes from the superhuman AI newsletter, and that'll be credited in the link down below as well. And here's the results that we got from Bard. Not bad. Now this bottom left hand one, probably the most probably the closest to the prompt we're asking for. The sepia tones, it looks like old oldies style. In any event, so you can see what Bard has given us. Now I'm going to give us a quick comparison to what you would get using Copilot or Midjourney, which admittedly is a paid service, so it's not really an apples to apples comparison, but we'll go the full spectrum here. So Bard is free, as I mentioned. Uh, the result that we got from Bard for the Golden Gate Bridge uh, as you can see, Bard here, 1536 by 1536 pixels and a 322 KB image. If you look at it, you can see cars are missing. You know, there's some there's some details here that are not perfect, but it's not bad. Uh, when we go to Copilot, we get a smaller image in in both pixels and file size, so 1024 by 1024 and 199 KB versus the 322 on the Bard image. So Bard is producing bigger images overall, but you can see that Copilot, we've got cars on the bridge, um, just it's got a different aesthetic, and it's certainly the more images you create and the different ways in which you write the prompt are going to give you different kinds of images anyways. But I would say Copilot is probably probably producing better images as, as it relates to real life at this point, but, but that's not necessarily what we always want. So just really adding another another image generating tool to your toolkit, another free image generating tool to your toolkit. And finally, here's Mid Journey, um, of course, much higher quality, 2048 by 2048, a 3.14 mega, megabyte file. You can see there's cars on the bridge. This could almost be a photo, uh, but that's of course Mid Journey. All right, Bard's Bigfoot,
Again, the image the image sizes are all basically the same as I as I explained before. I just want to show you image quality, uh, apples to apples, Bard, and then Copilot. the The photo quality looks good on Copilot, but if you look closer at the faces, and maybe if I move this guy down, you can see a little bit better. There's almost like some melting of the faces going on, which is really weird. Um, and this is Dolly. These are Dolly images, so it's surprising because it's coming from Copilot, right? Which is OpenAI, which is Dolly. In any event, that's that's what we got. Um, and then, of course, Mid Journey just blows them all out of the water. Um, so there you go. All right. Why should you care? Are the images any good? We talked about that, right? Um, I say absolutely. Uh, as you saw, they are totally worthwhile for any social media posts, YouTube thumbnails, and at least 101 uses for adding images to any type of presentation. Why should you bother using it? Yet another great weapon in your communication arsenal. And if the capability to better communicate by generating any image at will for free has not yet resonated with you, may I humbly recommend any book by Dan Rome. And in particular, this one, Show and Tell, How Everyone Can Make Extraordinary Presentations. In this book, Dan conveys the power of imagery and how, when we use pictures, people see exactly what we mean. We captivate our audience's mind. We banish boredom. I will leave you with a final quote by Ansel Adams. When words become unclear, I shall focus with photographs. When images become inadequate, I shall be con content with silence. Thanks for watching. If I have inspired you to try Bard Image Generation, please let me know. Comments down below. Don't forget, lots of link goodness below. Please like, subscribe, share this with somebody else that might like it, enjoy it, or find it useful. And as always, if you leave questions, I will leave answers. Now go and be productive.